Hey guys, well, this is convenient. I'm just over here cleaning my whole reptile room. And so, uh, you know what? Why don't I show you guys how I clean this whole room? Because uh, let me tell you, maintaining a pet room this large that has this many animals in it isn't as much of a walk in the park as everyone makes it out to be. Sure, if you have a routine established, it's straightforward, but it does take a lot of time and doing it right requires effort. So in today's video, what I'd like to do is show you guys how I clean and maintain my reptiles in the room specifically on a daily and weekly basis and that way hopefully you'll learn a little bit about my experience maybe pick a thing up or two that'll help you with yours for today's question of the day I'd like to ask you all how do you clean your enclosures what do you find is the best way to keep them looking very nice and clean not only for your viewing pleasure but for the health and well-being of your pets let me know in the comment section down below and I'll spray your comment with this vinegar water solution. No, I'm just kidding. I'll give your comment a heart right after and maybe we'll strike up a bit of a conversation. Awesome, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are on the back wall of the reptile room. This side of the room is really, it's just so beautiful and I'm so happy. The way these tanks are growing in, I'm actually gonna be making a video showing you guys an update on how they've grown in. They've really come in nicely and it's almost meditative. So nice to be able to come into the room and just look at these tanks. It's a little piece of the jungle right there. Now, the animals that live in here, as you may or may not know, are my Europlatus fantasticus, which are the satanic leaf-tailed geckos endemic to Madagascar. These animals do have lamellae on their toes, which are those microscopic little hairs that look like Velcro that allow them to cling to smooth surfaces, which entail results in the enclosure surfaces becoming a washroom. Everything is fair game. So you'll see lots of feces running down the glass walls, on the leaves, the branches, you name it. And we need to clean it. So there are a few things I use to make this firstly easier, secondly very efficient, and thirdly to just ensure that it's a job well done for the animal's sake and for our sake viewing the enclosures. The first thing I'm using here, so these are one of those flat-ended X-Acto knives and they work really well for scraping poo off of the glass. Now, one tip I'd like to offer you is to avoid spraying everything down before removing the poop. The reason for that is when you spray it down, it softens and it smudges and it's a bit more of a mess to clean. I personally recommend having at it with this tool while it's dry so it just flakes right off, snaps off, easy to remove. And then with whatever is residual, usually just some chalky urates that are stuck to the poo, that's the little white part beside the brown part, that stuff you can get off with the water and the other solutions we're about to talk about now. So the first solution I use to clean my enclosures goes in a bottle like so, and it's simply a mix of white vinegar and reverse osmosis water. The reason we use the reverse osmosis water, not tap water, is that reverse osmosis water is devoid of any minerals that will cake or crust or leave spots on the glass. We don't want that. The vinegar is acidic and will help remove stains and is sort of a natural cleaner. The purpose of it most commonly for myself is that I use this to spray down and clean all my vivarium walls and I find that the final result is quite a clean display so that is what this is for. Now this is the next solution that I use and I have it in a very very distinct easy to identify bottle because it's not to be messed with. This here is diluted chlorhexidine which is a cleaning solution used in the medical industry. It's excellent at killing viruses and bacteria. So the way I dilute my chlorhexidine is usually I do about 20 parts chlorhexidine to 80 parts reverse osmosis water. That's my concentration. Now I would like to offer a disclaimer about the chlorhexidine. So chlorhexidine is interesting in that you do have to be careful what type of animal you're using this product with. I can't say I know every species that can be ill affected by chlorhexidine but I do 
know, for example, that different types of mangrove snake are very sensitive and can actually die from breathing in the fumes of this product. So do your research beforehand. Don't just follow my video without the disclaimer and use this product to clean your reptiles or other pets. Make sure you check that it's safe to use. I know for a fact that my pets are safe and I can use this all around the reptile room, but you want to be sure as I mentioned, that your reptile is safe and this product is safe for them. Very important. The way that we're gonna use the chlorhexidine is what I do after removing all the poops is spray down the surfaces with this gently. I don't want it running all over the soil and getting into other things. I just want a little spritz over everything and then what I do is give it about 10 to 20 seconds to seep in there kill off any bacteria and that's when we come in and wipe it away with the next thing our paper towel good old paper towel so we're going to take some paper towel wipe away the remaining feces and marks and that should leave it pretty well disinfected now what i like to do for just that extra confirmation and feeling a bit better about everything is spray it down with a good old bottle of reverse osmosis water i just want to make sure there's no residual chlorhexidine kicking around that they can ingest yeah, that, that's really it. So I spray everything down after the cleaning with some reverse osmosis water, wash out anything I missed, that whole thing. And if you keep up with this routine, cleaning the enclosures once a week is sufficient. I like to do a bit of spot cleaning more regularly, but I know that if I'm only gonna get in there once a week, that's okay too. Let's go ahead now and see it in action. I'm gonna show you guys the poopy dirty enclosures. If we're lucky, we'll see a gecko or two out. I'm not gonna mess with them, they're sleeping, but I know for a fact there's one male out right now, and we'll see how I clean the enclosures. I'll do a little time lapse, you'll see it. All right guys, so one tip I like to use, I mean it's terrible because there's holes in it, but whatever, it works for me. I like to have a tray or a lid here so that when I open the doors to the exoterras, I can actually just take my scraper and scrape poop directly onto the tray. So as I slide down, the poop just falls right onto it, as you can see there. Here is what typical glass looks like, and you can see there's a poop right there. Literally, all we're gonna do is take the knife and scrape it right off, and it falls onto the tray, and that's it. So you just go in like that, try and clean everything, and that's one panel done. Now you see the residual urates. We're not going to worry about that just yet. So here on this side, again, we see there's lots of urates sliding all the way down. That was a real gross poop. So again, we're just going to slide in below and boop, just take it right off onto the bottom. Just go down, get as much off as we can. Voila. And then one thing I forgot to mention is I have a pair of tongs that I've labeled with some electric tape. They're my designated poop tongs. So with those, I'll go in and actually remove the feces that I've knocked off the glass. Just like that. Perfect. So the next part is where we come in with our chlorhexidine and we're just gonna gently do a spritz like that and then same on the opposite side. And now we just want to give that a few seconds to kind of sit and kill things. I'm just going to take some paper towel and get in there and wipe it off. And we're good as new. Same thing with the other side. Come in, wipe the enclosure off and we're good okay so sorry about the reflection you can see me wearing my gloves which is another thing to use if you have some now i finish the doors we're gonna go do the same on the inside one thing you can do is actually spray your paper towel and wipe the spots specifically that way you're not splashing chlorhexidine everywhere the geckos are still in here right now the two geckos that inhabit this enclosure you can actually see one male is sleeping right here under this Calathia network, gorgeous male Fantasticus, and the female, I saw her tail somewhere down there, so she's sleeping lower in the underbrush. So anyways, same thing goes for leaves. So with leaves, 
We can do a tiny bit of diluted chlorhexidine in the spot and wipe it off or even the vinegar water solution, which will help. So yeah, there's a few urates. All right, so here you can see everything's been well disinfected with the chlorhexidine. Now I'm just gonna go in with some of my vinegar water and just spray the glass on the outsides there. So we just get in there and wipe that glass off. And then, so there you go. That tank here is pretty well done. But as I mentioned before, I like to just, I'm just gonna get in there for some dust. I like to get the reverse osmosis spray down. So we're just gonna gently go ahead and really spray down the plants, especially after doing the chlorhexidine on the leaves. Now that it's well disinfected, do rid of the sides, the walls. And yeah, that's that's one enclosure down. So that's how I do my Fantasticus enclosures and that's how they look clean. This enclosure looks really nice. We can go ahead and move on. Kind of get the gist of it. There's poop there. This one's actually really bad. If you look here, see quite a bit of poop on the glass. They really uh, went to town pooping these two geckos. But yeah, check out how that creeping ficus is just really taken over. Again, I'll show you in detail when I do a small update on these enclosures and how they've grown in. I'm just gonna go ahead now and clean them and do a little time lapse so you can see the work that goes into it. All right. So here are my Toke geckos, at least three of them. Uh, we have Tiki and his two twins are in the cork hide behind there. Really looking forward to rehousing these guys. We're going to grab the feeding tongs here. It's been a while since you guys have seen Tiki, so let's get Mr. Teeks up here. Hey buddy. Wanna come on and say hi for us? Come on. Whoa. There you go. Get it, get it, get it. Good job, buddy. Oh, well, that's a happy toke gecko. I don't know about you guys. He looks pretty fantastic to me. Awesome, buddy. Anyways, cleaning their enclosure, I should say temporary enclosure, is pretty straightforward. I mean, these guys don't really poo on the glass, which has been a blessing, but they do like to poo up in the front of the enclosure. So we're literally just going to take the designated poop tongs, pick them out, boop, and throw the poop into the garbage. So very straightforward. Literally just go in there, take the poops out, and throw them out. So yeah, I'm gonna spend some time doing that now. It's kind of funny, I've been busy cleaning here and Sappy just came by. I don't know if you can see her, the reflection. She's like, hey, uh, I saw you give Tiki a super worm. Can I have one too, please? Hi girl. Yeah, you're beautiful, aren't you? I'll give you one, I'll give you one, don't worry. <laughs> All right, so I have this bin here that I'm just gonna use to collect my dirty water dishes. So I'm gonna take out their water dish, spill the water. So while that's sitting there, we're actually just gonna spray it with some chlorhexidine. So it's kind of gonna help disinfect it, let that soak. And uh, now what we're gonna do is just go in there and give the enclosure a good spray down. There you go, buddy. Perf. 
effect. Hi in there, guys. Hello. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and clean the crocodile skink enclosure. Okay, so cleaning out the crocodile skink enclosure is actually pretty straightforward. The main two components are removing decaying plant matter. So we have this here that we wanna get out. It's a dead pothos leaf. Um, if there's anything else super obvious, we take that out as well. Hi, you would like to eat something, wouldn't you? She's like, listen, man, you haven't fed me a superworm in a week. I would appreciate being given one. All right, girl. You can have a superworm. I'll give you one. Just hang in there. She's like, oh, I know where he's going to take it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey. Madame. There. There you go. Run away, little dinosaur, run away. Now, Sappy is over here too, so we can't not give him one. I know he's just probably in his little cave, so we'll drop a super worm right there. Oh, it fell in. Oh, he got it. Nice. Little baby's too small for super worms. They can have crickets later. Anyways, so the main things in this enclosure are sometimes they'll poop up here on top of the filter. Honestly, it's super uncommon. It doesn't happen very often at all. The main things I like to do is just clean the front because of the clay here at the water's edge that I did the terrarium putty with. They kind of smear it on the glass. So I really just go in here, clean the glass, and then once a month, I replace the filter cartridge there and I top it off and do my partial water changes. Um, there's lots of java moss in there, other aquatic plants that help remove the nitrates, which are nitrites, which is super helpful for the biological cycling. And again, clay hydroton will help also with surface area for bacteria to beneficially clean the water. Anyhow, the main thing is partial water changes here happen once a week. I also top it off with more RO water and sometimes I'll also add some tannin tea from Indian almond leaves. And then yeah, once a month, the filter cartridge is cleaned out. Hi, Sappy. No, you had, you already had one, you're done. Anyway, so yeah, you can see here, I'm just gonna go in and wipe the glass off, just like so. And it just makes a difference. It's really an aesthetic thing, right? Um, but I, I certainly appreciate it because it only takes them less than a week to get it super dirty again. But there we go. Take some of that off too. And yeah, just kind of makes all the difference in how the tank looks by removing all that. This pothos is just, while it's doing its thing as pothos, it's a little out of control. <laughs> That'll do. Glass looks nice and clean. Oh, hi. Are you gonna come back to the front for another one? <laughs> Silly. Perfect. All right, let's get the lid back on and then we'll move on to our new Caledonian friends on this side. All right, guys, so when it comes to the new Caledonian geckos here, my two crested geckos, Nona Firestripe and Pingu, as well as Jabba and Leela's enclosure, it's very much the same process as we saw with the leaftail geckos. We're gonna go in here, see if we can find any poop on the surfaces. We're gonna remove the water dish and the food dish and then wipe the walls down with a chlorhexidine solution and spray them with reverse osmosis. Lots of work to do here. Lichianus are always going to be some of the messiest geckos that I have uh, for obvious reasons. Their poo is just like a brown hot fudge sundae on the glass. That is the farthest thing from a hot fudge sundae, but fortunately might almost look similar. Oh, hi. How you doing, buddy? But uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started now.
right, we got all our dishes here. I'm gonna just take some chlorhexidine. Spray things down. All right, let's get to cleaning. All right guys, so now that we've cleaned the new Caledonian geckos, the tokes, all the Europlatus fantasticus, it's time to move on to Sabzi over here. Now, you guys haven't actually seen Sabzi since, well, the intro video that I filmed the day I got him. He's grown so much, and I have an update to give you guys. I have a few other interesting videos that I've been filming with him, so stay tuned. There will be plenty of really cool content pertaining to Sabzi, the Green Tree Monitor. But for now, what we're gonna do is clean out his enclosure. So I'll kind of show you guys the routine I do for him. Very similar to everyone else. We're going to clean all the glass here with the vinegar water solution. Go through the substrate, looking for poop and stuff that we can clean out. Give the substrate a good stir, remove the water dish there, and uh, yeah, clean it all out and replace it with fresh water. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for Sabzi. So let's go ahead and do that now. Well guys, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It gives you a little bit of an idea of how I go about cleaning my reptile room and the reptile enclosures in the room. That way you can kind of see some of the things I do daily as well as some of the things I do on a weekly basis. Without further ado, once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Take care. And if you'd like to see more content pertaining to my lizards, Click the link up above to my lizard playlist. Awesome.